combine Fleischer era animation with run and gun platforming, you get Cuphead, one of the hardest games of 2017. With tough bosses, long stages, and a ton of items to experiment with, it can be a challenge for new players. Well, what if I told you that you, yes you, can beat Cuphead? And what if I told you how to beat it in just 10 minutes? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do today. I have three tips to discuss, so without any further ado, let's get started. Our first tip is about maximizing your setup. In Cuphead, you can equip two weapons and one charm. Let's start with the charms. There's really only one I recommend using, and that's the smoke bomb. It reads, quote, you will not take any damage during a dash, a great defensive maneuver. This essentially makes you invulnerable for a brief period of time, and you'll need that for attacks that feel impossible to dodge. Simply put, no other charm in the game is this helpful this often. Now, weapons are far more subjective. A lot of them are good, but only in specific use cases that we'll talk about later. For now, I'll recommend two weapons that'll get you 90% through the game. First up is Spread. Spread is good in all run and gun games, but in Cuphead, it does the most damage. Now, the range isn't great, so you will have to be up close, but for bosses that stay still, nothing can beat it. The second weapon I would get is Chaser. Basically, this one's all about range. You shoot these little homing bullets, which means you don't have to be close at all. The trade-off here is that it doesn't do much damage. So having these two weapons mean that they complement each other. You use spread when you're up close, and then when you have to get away, switch back to chaser for that sweet, sweet range. And that's our setup. Smoke bomb, spread, and chaser. Bruh. The good news is that you can buy all three of these items as early as aisle one. Simply beat the first two run and gun stages while collecting every coin, then hit up the shop, and bam, you're done. You don't have to buy a single other item for the rest of the game. It's that simple. My second tip might be surprising to some, but I'm just gonna say it. You should buy the DLC. For $8, the Delicious Last Course makes the base game so much easier. There's two reasons for this. For one, it adds a bunch of new weapons. My personal favorite is the Crack Shot. It functions nearly identically to Chaser, but does more damage at the cost of a slower fire rate. It's by no means essential, and if you only have Chaser, that's totally fine. But if you're not a fan of it, try experimenting around. The new weapons are some of the best in the entire game. The second reason you should buy the DLC is to get Miss Chalice herself. She turns the game into easy mode. She's also available early on. As soon as you beat Isle 1, take the boat over to Isle 4, equip the cookie charm, and bam, you become Miss Chalice, unlocking a ton of utility. You get a double jump, a dash parry, a dodge roll, and oh, did I mention that Miss Chalice also has an extra point of HP? She really is broken. The one downside is that you lose the smoke bomb, but considering what you're getting in return, I think that trade-off is well worth it. If there's one piece of advice that'll help you beat Cuphead more than anything else, it's to use Miss Chalice as soon as possible. Trust me, you won't regret it. All right, for my last tip, I wanna talk about a few specific bosses that give new players trouble. Let's start first with Isle 1. The hardest fight here is Cagney Carnation. This boss has several attacks that are pretty ruthless. In particular, I had a rough go trying to dodge these stupid acorns. The way I got around it was by going all the way to the left of the screen, waiting for the acorns to shoot out, and then dashing over it. That seems to work most every time. When he's shooting at all these bullets, keep in mind you can actually parry the pink one before it hits the ground, meaning you don't have to deal with that stupid and vulnerable enemy that shoots projectiles. When you get rid of him, this fight is a lot easier because there's fewer things to focus on. After that, you beat phase three and you move on to aisle two. Speaking of aisle two, remember how I was talking about how different weapons have specific use cases? Well, this is one of them. Grim Matchstick is an awful fight and it was made worse by the fact that he used Spread and Chaser. Well, for this fight, I'd actually replace Spread with Lobber. Lobber moves in an arc pattern, similar to the Axe in Castlevania, and yes, while it's pretty slow, it does even more damage than Spread. Here's how I would beat the second phase of the dragon. You have these little flames that jump at you, and it can be really hard to avoid them when you're going from cloud to cloud. The way I would get around this is by establishing a pattern where you stay on the left side of the screen as long as possible. Do not jump until you absolutely have to. This means the flames will always follow you on the left side and you can avoid them much easier. As far as the third phase is concerned, I would just say don't even bother shooting at the projectiles. Leave them alone and do not fire a single shot until you hear the flamethrower. After that, use the lobber nonstop. You can hit him a bunch of times, and bam, there goes the dragon. There are actually several fights that benefit from using different weapons. And while I won't be able to talk about all of them, here they are on screen right now. So you can pause the video, take notes, and hopefully make some of these boss fights a bit quicker. 
Aisle 3 is interesting because the hardest fight this time is in a plane. In case you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm referring to Dr. Call's robot. When this fight starts, go immediately up to the laser and shoot at it. Then, right before it's about to fire, I'd go midway down screen and you should be able to hit a sweet spot where both the chest and the bottom of the robot get damaged at the same time. Then once that's over, go back up, fire at the laser, and then switch back and forth until both are defeated. Then you shoot at the heart a couple times, and as soon as the head is ready to launch out, use your super. You should be able to make contact with the head as it's flying, and bam, it explodes and you've skipped the entirety of the second phase. Phase three on the other hand, there's no real shortcut. It's about dodging bullets, pairing when you can, and using your super nonstop. Like, don't even wait for the bomb. As soon as the card fills up, just keep using another one, one after another. The quicker you can get through this fight, the better. With all that being said, let's move on to Inkwell Hell. We've arrived at what many people consider to be the hardest fight in the game, King Dice. The reason this fight sucks so much is that not only do you have to beat King Dice, you also have to fight a random nine boss gauntlet. So we're gonna break this up into two parts. First, I'm gonna tell you how to beat the gauntlet, and then I'm gonna tell you how to get through King Dice. Starting with the gauntlet, did you know you can actually influence the dice rolls? If you parry instantly, right when the hands clap, you'll always get a one. If you wait a little longer, you'll get a two, and if you wait longer than that, you'll get a three. Using this method, I was able to get exact rolls and fight specific bosses. Speaking of, which fights are the easiest? Well, there's number two, the chips, number three, the cigar, number four, the dominoes, and number eight, the magic eight ball. All four of these fights are pretty simple, have easy to dodge attacks, and happen fairly quickly. Above all else though, be sure to avoid the monkey, number nine. That fight goes on for way too long, and you're bound to get hit at some point, which sucks because it's right before King Dice, and you'll need all the HP you can get. And yeah, I suppose we should talk about King Dice. How do you beat him exactly? I don't know about you, but the whole avoiding the giant card attack thing, yeah, that was impossible for me. For one, they're massive, and they expect you to jump and parry over each one. I knew early on that wasn't going to happen, so I had to invent a bit of a cheese. At the start of the fight, you're going to want to pick a direction, either left or right. It's a 50-50 shot, just pick whichever one works for you. Then King Dice is going to put his hand down on one of two sides. Ideally, you want to be behind that hand. Then, if you're behind the hand, all you have to do is jump and use Chaser. You'll notice a few of the shots actually hit his head. From there, we've established a simple to follow pattern. If the hand starts out on the right, then the next time it'll be on the left, then the right, then the left, and so on. Really, the only bad part about this method is that if you pick wrong on the first try, you will have to deal with the stupid card attack. Thankfully, you'll know the pattern from here on out, and hey, look on the bright side. Use this as an opportunity to get your super out, and then hopefully that'll make things go a bit quicker. I know it's not a perfect method, but it sure is a lot easier than doing it the official way. After that is the devil, and turns out he's way easier. I would just use the spread shot for the majority of this fight. Stay on him nonstop, fire the spread, and jump from platform to platform whenever you see those axes. If you stay patient, you'll beat both the devil and the game. Congrats. <laughs> it's funny. I remember buying Cuphead and thinking to myself, yeah, that's nice, but I'm never going to be able to beat it. And trust me, it is a lot of work. It takes time to memorize each fight, but I genuinely believe anyone can do it. Hopefully this video armed you with the knowledge to be able to beat Cuphead, and now you'll be able to appreciate other parts of the game, like the gorgeous animation and the beautiful soundtrack. I legitimately think Cuphead is a fantastic game, and I hope this video made it more accessible to more people. I'm Aiden of Blue Catch Productions, and I'm signing off. Bye bye Guys, I just beat Cuphead. Fucking Cuphead? How about you get some real head? Get some bitches on you, dick. Cuh, talking about Cagney Carnation? More, li more, more like, more like bitches manifestation, because you have none. There ain't nowhere. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Fucking bitches. <laughs>